Okay, so now getting into our red cap policies here. The first thing I want to discuss is that there's two different types of red cap accounts. First, there are full accounts. These can do everything in red cap. And second, there are what we call data entry accounts. The distinction between these is not just the ability to enter data. It's really that the full accounts can create and design new projects and that they can also copy existing projects. The data entry accounts actually have access to all of the other features in REDCap in addition to entering data. So for instance, they can download and analyze existing survey data, but they cannot copy a project or modify an existing project by um, creating new elements. So if you're doing any sort of project design, you're going to need a full account. Um, the advantage of the data entry accounts is because they don't have access to some of these more powerful features, um, we're able to grant the data entry accounts with, with fewer requirements. So if you have a bunch of people that um, are joining your lab that are there uh, temporarily or that are working on part of your study team as volunteers or interns, um, it might be a good idea to have them have data entry accounts, which we can create a little bit more quickly and I'll explain why here on the next slide. To be eligible to receive a REDCap account, you must be um, either affiliated with Children's National or George Washington University, uh, George Washington Hospital, or the George Washington Medical Faculty Association. Um, and essentially that means you have to have an at childrensnational.org or an at gwu.edu email address. Um, alternatively, if you aren't based at either of those institutions or if you have collaborators working elsewhere, um, you could be just part of a project where the sponsor or PI is affiliated with either GW or Children's National. In those cases, we'll, we'll grant uh, data entry only accounts. As for the training requirements, to meet the training requirements and receive a full REDCap account, which you can then use um, for your own projects, you need to do what you're doing now and complete the online screencast, questionnaires, and exercises, or attend the REDCap 101 in-person training. The data entry only accounts may forego the training options, and in those cases, the PI or study team is responsible for training any new users. I would highly encourage uh, sending any new users now to this online training, even if they only have data entry accounts, because we co cover most of the basics um, and provide some background just on how to navigate REDCap and what can be done with it, which I think will be helpful to any new users. The last thing that I want to mention is that you should not share your username or password with anyone. Um, it is okay to give somebody your username so that they can invite you to collaborate on a project and we'll, we'll talk about that later, but under no circumstances should multiple people be using the same username. And we will also at the REDCap admin team never ask you for your password. We have an ability to send you password reset links and things like that. So we won't ever ask you for your password and you shouldn't share it with anybody. The reason we don't want anybody sharing multiple username, uh, sorry, multiple people sharing the same username is because the audit trail in REDCap, it logs every change by username. And so if multiple people are using the same username, uh, it won't be possible to definitively say who made a given change in the REDCap project, which defeats some of the purpose of the audit trail and the logging features. Uh, it's free to have you know as many users as you need associated with your project, so just request separate accounts for each individual and do not share your username or password with others. If you are a PI, there are some additional responsibilities you have under our CTSI policies. Um, first, if you're doing a research study um, uh, with human subjects, you need to make sure that IRB has approved your study or exempted your study before you begin collecting real data. That doesn't mean that you need IRB approval before you start creating your project. In fact, you should start creating your project you know, well in advance. Um, but before you begin collecting subject uh, subject data, you do need to have your IRB number or exemption number in, in your project. Uh, if you're PI, you also have some responsibility for off-site users to um, help train them and answer questions, especially people that uh, just have the data entry accounts. And you're able to submit REDCap data entry account requests for those users. 
they can submit them themselves following a link that's at the end of this these slides or you could submit it for them on their behalf it's also your responsibility as a PI, and this is really important, to maintain the user rights within a project and to remove users from a project when they're no longer working on it. And to also go ahead and notify the REDCap support team when a user leaves. Um, and I will go through some details towards the end of the training about how to manage user rights within a project. Again, this is just managing what levels of access people have to different things. You know, can they modify a previously entered record? Can they delete a record? Can they export the full data set? Can they export data that might have PHI in it? You know, those are all things that you can set within the user rights for each user within your REDCap project. Okay, the next thing that I want to go over are the two different types of instruments that you can have within a REDCap project. Um, sometimes you'll also hear me or other members refer to these as forms, so either forms or instruments. Um, the first type of form we'll talk about are case report forms, and this is really the default instrument type within REDCap. With a case report form, the user has to have a REDCap account and have access to a project, um, and they're going to log into REDCap and directly key data in to the project and enter it all through REDCap. And there's a number of different uh, examples of this that are used across uh, project types. The other type of instrument is a survey. In this case, you will send a web link to participants for them, participants for them to enter data online, and the user in this case will not be logging in to REDCap. The person taking the survey probably has never heard of REDCap. This is just a, a, a study subject or a participant in your survey that's going to be filling out the survey. This is sort of similar to, to something like SurveyMonkey. There's a bunch of different survey options. So you could have a public URL that all participants go to, or you can use some REDCap features to email a unique URL to specific participants. And in that case, um, you can do a little bit more tracking about who has responded and who hasn't and, and send them reminders. There's also, uh, these surveys can be identified or anonymous. There's a participant identifier function for tracking responses. Uh, you can again set up some automated notifications to track responses and you can also use REDCap to manage and compose all of your email invitations. Uh, so some examples of surveys are um, the REDCap account request form that you'll fill out at the end of this, the uh, REDCap training evaluation survey, or if you signed up for this class using the online um, training registration form, that was also a REDCap survey. You know, so in, in all of those cases, you never have to log into REDCap to fill out your survey. It's somebody created the survey by logging into REDCap, but then they're just emailing a link to people to open to fill it out. So you can have um, a mix of these instruments in a project. So a project could be all case report forms, all surveys, or some combination of the two. Um, and they can be used interchangeably. Again, everything really starts out in REDCap as a case report form. Then with just a couple clicks, you could turn any case report form into a survey, and I'll show you how to do that later. Um, there's also uh, another sort of difference in, in studies or in forms, and that's whether the, the study is cross-sectional, where you are um, looking at different uh, groups within a population or a longitudinal study where you're going to be comparing the same subject at multiple times. So both of these are available, uh, these study options are available in a REDCap and in fact any form can be selected or any instrument can be selected to be kind of either one of these. So you can have an instrument repeat multiple times so that um, you can look at changes over time. That could be within a project that has some forms that repeat and some forms that don't. So for instance, you might do an initial um, physical exam for somebody and then you might send them you know, monthly follow-up surveys about certain health outcomes. That's just one example of how you'd have a physical exam as a single case report form and then you'd have a longitudinal element of these monthly surveys that would repeat at multiple times. Uh, again, this w is all really project dependent and these things can all be mixed and matched within a REDCap project. 
You can also have multiple red cap projects. Um, and so I typically think of a project as being a single kind of cohesive study unit. Um, so if you're wanting to relate a lot of data between different forms for the same study subjects, I would typically group all of those forms into a single pro project. Um, but if you, you might be working on, you know, one study looking at, uh, you know, um, uh, inhaler usage among asthmatics in DC and then you might be looking at a very different subject that's you know more regional or across the whole country or is looking at specific forms of medical intervention those uh, may exist as separate projects or could be uh, you know nested within the same project it'll just depend on how you need to relate those different pieces of information to each other typically if that information doesn't need to be very tightly related I would say group them as separate projects, uh, just so you have each project as kind of a discrete unit, a discrete study. Okay, now I just want to quickly go over the different types of fields that you can build into your REDCap project. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and log into REDCap and start using these. So the way that m the vast majority of our users build their REDCap projects is by using the online designer. And that's what I'm showing a screenshot of here. This is a, a drag and drop menu builder to create a, a new project or a new instrument from the ground up. So you do this by just adding a field. And so you would say, I want to add a new field and then you would select your field type and the field types are all the different field types are shown here I, on the next slide I'm going to give you some examples of these here's some common field types so the first here radio buttons this is sort of your classic kind of online exam type question you also have a drop down list this is, is uh, encoding the same information as the radio buttons just in a slightly different format you have check boxes similar to the radio buttons but they allow multiple answers to be selected Probably the most commonly used form is a text box, so this accepts raw text. Um, but you could set a text box to have a variety of validations. So this same text box with a date validation would look like this. All of a sudden the calendar icon appears. This is clickable, so somebody could click on this, pop up a calendar to select the date. The today button also uh, appears in case you're asking for today's date. That's just a little shortcut. If people click that, it will fill in the date. There's also an option to add a matrix of fields. Um, here I'm just showing a quick example. A classic example of a matrix would be these, you know, strongly agree, agree, neutral, disagree, strongly disagree questions. Whoops, let me go back. Um, so strongly agree, agree, neutral, disagree, strongly disagree. These are often done in a matrix. Uh, the difference between a matrix and a normal field is that in a matrix, the um, the answer choices are always identical within a matrix. So you have a field here and then all of these choices, you could have a much simpler matrix. For instance, you could do true or false questions as a matrix. That just makes things a little bit easier on the user experience side because it tends to be a little bit faster for people to work down a column um, to say, you know, think about when you're coming back to the US if you've been traveling abroad and you fill out the customs and immigration form and you just go down the, typically you go down the list saying, no, I'm not bringing any agricultural products. No, I haven't, um, you know, been exposed to snails or things like that. And you just work your way down the list saying yes or no, true or false. So the matrices can be a little bit faster for a user to work through. Okay, so with that, let's um, pause here and I'm going to end these slides and we'll, we'll all log into REDCap together by going to this URL.